All right, so this is chapter nine, part two, and we're gonna do a little bit of whiteboard work as well for this one. So let's open up my handy dandy little tool here and get started. So where we left off was the mRNA codon chart, and I was explaining how um, to use the chart and also the fact that the code is redundant, which makes uh, many point mutations in the genetic code silent, meaning they had there has been a nitrogenous base change, but there has not been a corresponding amino acid change. So now that we've established that, let's kind of flex our central dogma muscles a little bit and see if we can go back and forth between some sequences and whatnot. Okay, so I have this handy dandy new feature uh, where I can toggle over to blackboard or whiteboard. So let's do that now. Oh no, it got dark. Okay, so um, let's first do... And I'm going to choose pink because that seems fun. Okay, so let's first do um, DNA to RNA. So let's start up here with DNA. And then, well, I'll leave DNA pink. So let's. I'm just going to make up arbitrarily uh, a code. So I'm not going to do it based on anything. I'm just going to make up. The only thing that I'm going to think about when I do this is making sure that the uh, it's a multiple of three because, as we know, codons are three bases long. So if you have fewer than three bases, you don't have a complete codon and you can't really tell what amino acid it's going to be. So, um, well, in some cases. So let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, perfect. So that's our DNA sequence. So let's do RNA. And specifically, this is going to be mRNA. So again, this is something that tripped a lot of students up. Um, differentiating between mRNA and tRNA. So tRNA just exists as far as uh, our intents and purposes are concerned for this class and then uh, arrives at the ribosome conveniently at the right time, conveniently carrying the appropriate amino acid. And this class doesn't really go into how uh, that's managed. That's a molecular biology class topic. So for this one, we have to remember our pairing rules and we have to remember that you, uracil, is present in mRNA instead of T. So everything else is the same. So uh, here goes a G, here goes a U, here goes a C, C, A, U, A, U, G. And I'm pretty sure A, U, G is a stop codon. So this might be a nonsensical transcript, but hey, we're just practicing, right? Um, so G, 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 and U, C, A. Okay, so I'm gonna underline every codon again. Um, I'd like to do this just because it helps me keep track of my work. So one thing that happens when you don't is that you get something where, um, so the, the, the three at a time thing is called an open reading frame. That's how you read the code. And if you do this, for example, if I were to read that as AGG instead of CAG and then GTA, um, that's going to change the amino acid sequence and give me the wrong answer. So that's why it's good to be mindful of that. Okay, so now let's try and look at the amino acid sequence. And I'm going to unwhite or unblackboard here for a minute. And it's going to look a little bit weird, so just prepare. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and write over the top of this. So let's go find GUC. That's valine. And let's see, CAU, that's histidine. And AUG, oh, I was wrong. AUG, oh, AUG is start, the. But also methionine. GGG is glycine. 
And let's see, U C A is going to be serine. Okay, so let's go back to our blackboard. That makes a little bit more sense. So that's how you use that. So you have valine, histidine, methionine, glycine, and serine, and these are our amino acids. Perfect. Okay, so this codes for this. But the valine won't arrive at the ribosome if not for its tRNA, which has a complementary anticodon to the mRNA's codons. So you get the tRNA sequence not from the DNA and not from the amino acids, but from the mRNA. So I'm going to pick a different color here, and we're going to fill that in. So let's see here. So we're just going to obey all the rules. So G, that should be a C. U, that should be an A. G. Let's see here. G. U. A. And so I've done that uh, based on the mRNA so far. But remember, the quick and dirty way to get a tRNA sequence is to look at the DNA sequence and just replace all the Ts with Us. So that's what we're going to do. So let's see, U, A, C, 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 and A, G, U. So let's check our work. A goes with U, check. C goes with G, check. U goes with A, check. Perfect. So the trick does work. So that's how you use that. Um, and also just be aware, another mistake I see made very often by students when they're working through this stuff is um, they'll take the DNA complementary strand first and then derive the mRNA from it, and that's not how you do it either. So this, as I've drawn it here, is correct. So I'm gonna um, now give you an example of how students screw it up. I just want to be very clear. What I'm about to write is incorrect. I'm writing it that way for the purposes of warning you about a common mistake. So let me, and I'm going to do it in orange. I'm going to write on the screen, orange is the wrong color, just so that uh, if anybody's kind of only halfway paying attention, they don't internalize the wrong message. So orange equals wrong way. Okay, so here's what I see done on tests a lot. A student will go through like this, be okay, G, T, C, C, A, T, cat, haha, A, T, G, 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 and T, C, A. And then from this is where they will try to derive the mRNA. So here we've got C, A, G, and G, U, A, and U, A, C, and C, 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 and A, G, U. So if we check our work, what we're going to see is, okay, let's do CAG first. So CAG is GIN, and let's see, GUA, GUA is VAL, UAC is tyrosine, tier, CCC is proline, and AGU is serine. So as you can see, that's a completely different amino acid sequence that's derived from the wrong thing. So we don't want that. Also, remember how I said that the quick and dirty trick to deriving your tRNA sequence is by replacing all the Ts with Us in the DNA? So if I were to do that for this, I'm going to get C, 
A G G U A U A C C C C A C U. Oh, look. These two things are the same. So, a way to avoid this mistake is, once you do your mRNA, check and make sure that it's not just the DNA with the T's replaced with U's, because that means you did it wrong. Okay? All right. So, let's trash that stuff and go back to our chart. So now I'm going to select a couple amino acids. I'm going to write them in a different color up here. So let's say... I want my start, threonine, leucine, lysine, glycine, stop. And then let's switch colors and we're going to just arbitrarily pick one of these. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, they all code for the same amino acid. So let's do so start is A U G. Three and E, let's do A C C. Leucine C U G. Lysine, let's do A A G AG. Haha. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Uh, glycine, G, G, G. I'm just trying to pick ones with lots of ro uh, things in a row for ease. And then I can pick any one of my stop codons. So I'm going to pick U, A, A, I guess. So this is therefore our mRNA. So let's do B, T. Why do I always draw my T's backwards before tRNA? Like, I don't do that in my normal writing. I don't know why that is. Oh, well. Okay, so my tRNA is going to be U, A, C, and U, G, G, UG, haha, <laughs> G, A, C, U, U, C, 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 and A, T. Perfect. Oops, I made a mistake. Haha. -ha. Not TT. No T's in RNA. It's going to be A U U. Okay, so these are the anticodons that we've got. Now, let's make our DNA sequence. And I'm going to make this one be whatever that color is orangey yellow. So I can either do this by looking at the mRNA or I can do it the easier way and look at the tRNA. I think I'm going to do that. So T. Oh, excuse me. Blech. Sorry, guys. I'm, I think I'm getting sick. My brain's a little bit fuzzy. I apologize. So for DNA, we're going to have... Oh, I was no, I was right the first time. I'm just being an idiot. So basically just replace all the U's with T's. And then everything else is the same. Oops. So let's check our work really quick. T, A, T, A, perfect, A, U, C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, T, A, T, A, perfect. So I've checked it and it has been done correctly. So hopefully what I've demonstrated to you by now is that you can do that particular exercise both forwards and backwards. So I could ask you on a test to start with DNA and derive RNA and amino acids, or I could do it the other way around like I just showed you. So you need to be comfortable using that mRNA codon chart to accomplish these. And I recommend watching this video and working through your own problems on this a couple times um, just so that you avoid the errors and pitfalls that I just showed you. Um, another thing that you need to keep in mind is the following. So on questions like this, I can also ask you name of enzyme that does 
the step. Name of step. What I mean by step is IE translation. And the location of step inside the cell. So for example, to go from DNA to mRNA is called transcription. Let's move this transcription. And the location for that step is nucleus, right? So that's an example of some things to be aware of, just so that you can make sure you're showing me that deep knowledge, showing me really complete mastery, so you can earn as many points as possible. Okay, so now let's return to our PowerPoint, shall we? And finish that up. So, some issues with gene expression. So to express a gene is to transcribe and translate that gene, right? But not all proteins need to be made at the same time. So some proteins you want to not have around because they would be harmful if they were not present when they needed. So uh, the example I gave was insulin. So if you release insulin in the appropriate physiological context, meaning you just ate, everything's great. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you release insulin when you're already hypoglycemic because you're in a fasted state, that can actually kill you because you can get uh, hypoglycemic shock, which is very, very bad. So obviously the transcription and translation of proteins is time dependent in a lot of cases. So cells have different mechanisms for turning protein synthesis on and off, and it's different for between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, specifically because of that nuclear difference. So in, remember, in prokaryotes, there is no nucleus, there is only a nucleoid. And because of that, transcription and translation can happen simultaneously, just like that picture early in the PowerPoint. So what that means is if you wanna switch protein synthesis off, you have to disable RNA polymerase. You have to do something to make that guy either not do his job or do his job less well. Okay, so eukaryotic gene regulation. Um, lots of different ways to do it. So one is epigenetics, and that one um, controls how tightly coiled the DNA is. And so let's add uh, around the histones. And you can also put a methyl group on top of the DNA. It's called methylation, and that successfully inactivates genes as well. Um, during transcription, RNA polymerase activity can be ramped up or down. So you can upregulate gene expression by causing RNA polymerase activity to be increased, or it can be downregulated, causing polymerase activity to decrease. RNA processing, uh, which remember includes alternative splicing, um, you can chop a gene in such a way that although it's being transcribed, it's not able to be translated. During protein translation, microRNAs can, it can destroy the existing mRNA strand. And you can also do things to proteins after they are completed. It's called post-translational modification um, to enable them, disable them, or change them. So there's a lot more variety in the way that this process can be regulated in eukaryotes. And that is the end of this chapter. So today we've done a couple of things. We've completed the video screencasting of chapter nine and worked through some problems um, around the central dogma on my virtual blackboard. So when I record next. I will be recording mitosis and walking you through that before we move on to meiosis. So thanks for your attention and have a good rest of your day.